Hey guys, uh, sorry to keep you waiting. I thought I had this scheduled for later in the morning. I usually try to let you guys sleep in a little bit on the weekends, you know, because this is a lot of stuff. So it appears as though the face of American policing is about to change forever. The long enjoyed qualified immunity that officers hid behind that enabled them to harm the very people that they swore to protect is over. Now, most of this unfairness that police forces have, you know, distributed amongst the populace was nonviolent, but some of it was. We don't want to paint with a broad brush here, but I think what we can all agree on is that they began to overstep their bounds quite a bit over the last five or ten years. And that basically what's been happening is that they've been emboldened by this qualified immunity. And they don't care about civil rights. And this goes for white people and black people. Now for the purpose of this show, we're going to use the symbols W and B to describe those two groups. Because YouTube only allows themselves to talk about race, but we're not allowed to really do that. So what does this all mean? Well, they can now be sued. They could be prosecuted and they're going to face the very same law that you and I have been forced to face for doing the very same things that they're doing. So now they can get in trouble. But what does this mean for the future of policing in America? And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. We're also going to do a new update on how top down race baiting works in America. They are truly trying to push us towards a conflict with each other. And through that chaos, they derive power. And they derive also power from fear. Now, no doubt, this is a good thing. But why now? These are the questions we need to ask ourselves. Let me check in with you guys. Again, sorry for keeping you waiting. Normally, I actually go on early. But uh, looks like you guys were able to pop into the stream here. Okay, good. I don't see any sound problems. Okay, let's keep going with this. Now, this is a good thing, but why now? That's the question. So, you've got... Imagine the dynamic that's happening in America right now. We've got almost 100,000 troops that are now home from foreign theaters. So, you got to ask yourself, why are the powers that be making this move? Well, I can tell you that here in Stockton, the police force went bankrupt I think this happened about five or eight years ago. And in this case, the reason why they went bankrupt was largely because of corruption. And who do you think stepped in to replace them? The federal government. Yes, Stockton is one of the only cities in America with a federalized police force. Now, according to this article, the feds would also lose qualified immunity just like the local and state forces and but if you were to go to sue somebody who would who would it be easier for you to sue would it be easier for you to sue local state or federal obviously local and state is much easier to sue right because once you get to the federal the corruption is at an all-time high and you might get your case heard before a judge but at the end of the day your case may be thrown out. Now, I don't know that, but that's just the feeling that I get. How many people do you know that have successfully sued the federal government? So this is a power grab is what this is in my eyes. No doubt, police forces have become very corrupt. We all know that. They've exceeded their police powers over all of us. Now, what I do like about this is that now the violations of the Constitution can be heard in court. Like illegal search and seizure or detainment. See, before, there wasn't much you could do about this. Because these officers enjoyed this protection. Now, if your rights are violated, maybe you can, they'll think twice about doing that because they know they can be sued. Now, the sad thing about all this is that who's going to get rich? And of course, we know that the lawyers are the ones, they're, they're chomping at the bit right now going, ooh, can't wait to start suing some 
police departments. They're going to make a ton of money. But then you got to think to yourself, well, maybe police departments will do a better job of keeping their officers in check and not backing their play every time. You know, not putting just putting them on some kind of leave, administrative leave without any consequences. Let's get into this article a little bit. And then after that, we're going to get into some updates on the top down race baiting. Now, it says here. On a largely party line vote, U.S. House of Representatives Wednesday night approved the GF Justice in Policing Act. Now, we're not going to name this individual because he's loaded. We're just going to call him GF. A massive overhaul of American policing that would make it much easier to sue rogue officers. Among its many provisions, the bill would eliminate qualified immunity for all local, state, and federal law enforcement officers. Under qualified immunity, a government official's escape government officials escape any legal liability for civil rights violations unless the victim can show that their rights were clearly established at the time thanks to this loophole federal courts have upheld qualified immunity to fresno officers accused of stealing more than a quarter million dollars in cash and rare coins an idaho swat team that bombarded an innocent mom south with tear gas grenades and a georgia sheriff's deputy actually shot a 10 year old boy while aiming for the family's dog. We as a country have a choice. We can either choose police accountability or choose qualified immunity, but we cannot choose both. One of the act's original co-sponsors said on the House floor, the purpose of the uh, Justice and Policing Act is not to second guess officers who act in good faith. The objective is to hold liable officers who repeatedly abuse their power and who rarely if ever face consequences for their repeated abuse. Now. I'm a strong proponent of you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So increased aggression breeds aggression. Why do you think so many people are going after the cops now? Because they feel threatened. Why do you think people are disrespectful to cops now? Because they feel threatened. Never used to be like that. I mean, I remember being a youth. We would talk smack to the the cops, but I was in a different stage of my life. In my early adulthood, I tended to respect police officers. But now, the whole mood has changed. You know, part of qualified immunity also spills over into, like for instance, remember you used to be able to get out of a speeding ticket? Especially if it was your first offense. One one in every two times, the, the cop would just go, hey look, slow down. Or they would be like, nice to you, right? But not anymore. It's like they're out to fill a quota. Now, under this, you could probably make a case for this. You could say, look, I object to these police officers. This is a speed trap. I'm going to hire an attorney. Well, I don't I don't recommend doing that, but some people may if they feel like they've been unfairly targeted, right? And there's way too many tickets being written in this area, and that's not upholding the law. That's a speed trap in the money pit. Police officer, police force is trying to get rich off of writing people tickets. So you might be able to have that heard in front of a judge. Now, I don't have much faith in this justice system. But this is what this act could. You could, you could apply that to that. So this is the state of affairs. And so you'll notice they're still beating this whole GF thing, right? Here's another article. This here. Stark divide on race. Leasing emergence since the GF death. This poll shows. I wouldn't believe this poll. This is more baiting. Top down baiting. Right? This is what they do. They got to keep this at the forefront of people's minds. Because this is where they derive their power. And. So. You'll notice when they talk about GF, they don't say anything about his illustrious career in adult cinema, do they? That gets shut down. Anyone that tries to post that gets shut down. And it's funny because when you look at, there's no fact check for it. They don't deny that this is what he was doing, but they they couch it under hate. They say, oh, you can't say that because that's it. So you can't talk about a man's past. Automatically, you're considered a person that is involved in hate speech of some kind they don't want this man's legacy clouded 
They need to maintain his purity as the face of division because they've invested way too much time and effort into this whole story, right? Now, on my Facebook, we had exposed how there was a group that he was part of and there was a group page. And the page was started on the pre-anniversary of his death to the day, like two or three years before he died. So there's something weird going on with that. And then the pictures show all kinds of weird stuff like they're at some coffee shop or something or some place of they're eating. And outside the window is a cruiser, police cruiser. There's something weird going on with this whole thing. So let's let's look at this, what this poll that they are telling us is happening here. It says Americans trust in BLM movement has fallen and their faith in local law enforcement has risen since protests demanding social justice justice swept the nation last year. The debate over the intersection of the R word and policing will be in the spotlight again as jury selection opens Monday on the trial of this guy in the death of this guy, which sparked nationwide marches last year. You know, it's interesting. People started marching in protest against CV-19 and all that got washed over by that whole situation. And they just co-opted that and washed it away. The survey finds complicated and shifting views about his actions, broader questions about the R-word, on many issues, there is a chasm in the perspective between B and W people. So, they're stirring the pot. They want to keep this in the forefront of your mind. Now, by now you guys have all heard about the stage at CPAC. In which Mr. T, the Don, spoke. And I believe that this whole thing right here, basically was planted as a seed to again further the divide they put the symbol there on purpose it's right here in the stage it's undeniable but of course they're saying oh we didn't put that there on purpose but yet here it is right there and i'm just i'm just showing you very quickly there it is right there on the collar of the group that rhymes with yahtzee and so why would they do this, right? Well, I think they put it there on purpose so then they can then deny it, which would enrage people of color and make them feel like there's still a race problem in America. I believe that's the intent of the stories like this. Top down, race baiting. And of course, Mr. T got up and spoke here. And, you know, this whole issue of race, it took me a while to figure out. Because I've also been indoctrinated from birth, right? My, my mother was part of the 1960s struggle when you couldn't drink from a fountain if you were a certain color. Even though my mother is mixed black, she still, I mean, back then it was like, man, if you had a drop of black blood, you were black, right? Well, so since she did, she suffered. And then she saw her darker brothers and sisters suffering too so she has some sentiments about all this even though much of that is gone most of that is gone um she has strong feelings about this okay so it takes a while sometimes she assumes the worst of people before she assumes the best but this is crazy because one day i woke up i've been a lot of places you guys i woke up and i realized that it's really, really hard to find people who don't like you because of your color. Or people that make racial comments or have these sentiments. You almost have to go looking for it. And I just never really saw it. The only place that you see it is in the news. Top down race baiting. Now, I just finished uh, another episode of BBI, it's a TV series, and it was all about a B group, remember we're using code language here, that was being surveilled by DHS. And then there was a, a B 
FBI officer who found herself split about why they were monitoring the B group who were depicted as the victims in the episode, but they weren't, but DHS was not monitoring the W group who were the aggressors in the episode. So the B uh, FBI officer was like upset about that. She found herself torn in her job in which she felt like the government was still involved in racial profiling. But by the end of the episode, I realized that really what you want, what they want you to think, the programming behind this is that they want B people to believe there is a W group around every corner plotting to harm B people at any chance they get. And there are a lot of B people out there that feel as though they're just a sitting target waiting for the next hate crime. This is the programming that they've been involved in. Now, I've never, ever felt anything close to my safety being, I've never felt targeted in any way, shape, or form as a black man. But this is what they want you to think. And a lot of people buy into this. They believe this. They believe that there are rampant hate crimes because of people's color. On both, you know, mostly directed towards them. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the show, aggression breeds aggression. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. You don't take the bait. Like, for instance, when they let all of the B people burn everything down for the last year. Don't take the bait because now you become a target. Now you're going to have people going, you know, you can't do that. And then they buy into the divide by color. And next thing you know, you're finding yourself in the in this in this whirlwind of emotions. And the devil just has is his playground. He loves that. Now, in the episode, the W group is enraged because the B group burned down their family business during the riots. So they're tapping into this fear, paranoia, and aggression. Now, let's move on to this next story. Make sure we're connected first. Now, we got a show later in the day. I want you guys to make sure you subscribe to the backup channel. You can check that out uh, later this morning, I think, or in the evening. And I'll be back in the chat in a second. But let's get on to this next story. This is crazy. Now, remember we were talking about Ashley Judd and her ape adventures? Remember the 55-hour ordeal in the Congo where she miraculously broke her leg but there was no blood no swelling well they're now telling us that the same exact ape that she was studying in the congo the bonobos monkey which is another word for them is pan that's their genus or whatever that the, that the bunch of them came down with cv19 and had to be vc'd what let's read this real quick because this is kind of funny Great apes given CVVCs after outbreak at the San Diego Zoo. Move follows eight gorillas testing positive at the start of 2021. Nine great apes have been given experimental CV19. See, they admit they admit it's experimental for them, but not for us. We're in a big experiment right now. I cannot believe how many people have taken this out of fear. Unreal. Be given the experimental CV-19 VC at the zoo after an outbreak in a troop of gorillas there in January. Five bonobos, this is what Ashley Judd was studying, and four orangutans became the first great apes at the American Zoo to receive jabs against the disease in January and February. The animals were given two doses of experimental VC developed by the U.S. veterinary pharmaceutical company Zotus for use in animals. Oh, okay. So this is different. This isn't the same one we're getting. The VC could also be used on mink, cats, and dogs if given regulatory approval. Oh, let's make a couple more billion. Let's get everyone freaked out that their uh, animals have this. And then they'll run out and during the next vet visit and make sure everybody is uh, up to speed. Or they may require this for your animal to travel on a plane. Who knows what's coming next. Zotus. Ooh, it kind of sounds like Lotus, doesn't it? said the zoo had made an emergency request for the VCs after eight members of the Western Lowland Gorilla Troop tested positive for CV-19. The symptoms included coughs, runny nose, and lethargy. 
they don't mention a fever here. The, gr the gorillas are believed to have caught it from an asymptomatic zookeeper who tested positive. Okay, so now they're saying it's jumping species. So we went from zookeeper to ape. Zoo staff has been wearing... This is right out of Planet of the Apes, you guys. This is crazy. The zoo said staff had been wearing masks at all times around the grill. See? What? Cheap has since made a full recovery and public are allowed to visit the animals after again after restrictions were lifted. Oh, this is just crazy. Crazy, crazy. Now... I wanted to finish up today's show with this last story here. And just to demonstrate to you that the Don's plan from the beginning was to write a huge check to the pharma companies for a VC and make sure as many people as possible took it. Now, when I would, I, back in the day when we were trying to warn everybody about warp speed and all this last year, I would use clips from the New York measles outbreak. Remember that? And the Don said, they have to get their shot. Remember those words? And people shamed us for making the connection between then and now. Yet, here it is again at CPAC. Saying almost the exact same thing. Now it's weird. You go onto YouTube and you can't find the speech. I don't know if you guys can find it, email it to me. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter now, but I wanted to cover this before we got too far into, away from this event. Here are his words, right, right in here. The revelation first came to light after T took the stage at the CPAC. Everyone should get your shot, he told the audience, prompting questions from reporters about whether he had his. Now, the crazy thing is, is his supporters want so bad for him to be exonerated, for him to be right, for him to be able to say, I told you so. And after hearing this and his words, you can imagine that the people that still support him are going to run out and get it. Just to, just to do what he's saying, just to prove him right and to still show support for him. So all those people, the letter that shall not be named, and other people who think that he was supposed to regain the presidency a couple days ago, they're going to go out and do this now because he asked them to do it. You don't think that there weren't a ton of people watching him speak at CPAC? His supporters, probably every last supporter he had, tuned into that. And when they heard these words, this is what they will do. Now, this article says that he and Milani went out and secretly got it. It says here, the Don and Milan quietly got their VCs last month. Now, I don't believe this, but he isn't denying it either. And what that is, is more mental manipulation. To make his followers feel like it's safe. They'll say, oh, he, he just went and got it secretly, so we'll go get it secretly. This is all about money, you guys, and getting as many people to get it as possible. This is a bipartisan effort. They're not announcing it like that. But notice how both sides are making everybody or wanting everybody to take the Don's VC. And Here's how silly people are. J&J &J just came out with their version of the VC, right? So guess what? Guess what's going to happen now? The Dems and their side and the, and the freaking Biden side, they're going to go, oh, well, that one came out under Biden. So we'll take that one. We're not taking T's VC, the one he developed for Warp Street. We'll just take Biden's, right? This is, the, this is how silly people are about... about politics and division and partisanship and i hope that every last person that comes to this channel has already steps outside of that right left paranoia so that's what i wanted to show you guys today we will be on here later today well on the on the backup channel 
and over the weekend I got several uh, shows scheduled for the weekend on the backup channel not here so if you don't see me on the weekend it's because we're over there so you just go down to the description box and click on the link to the backup channel It'll take you right over there you can subscribe and set your notifications and uh, that's what we'll be over the weekend now let's go into the chat here let this catch up thanks everyone for tuning in zoom 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 there it goes thanks I really appreciated you guys coming yesterday yesterday's show was amazing for so those of you that missed it you definitely want to check that out the second part of that show and the decode that we did on the OA was I think one of our best and it was all you know confirmations of things that we had discovered years ago that were now coming to light in the episode the tree stumps that once covered the earth the hexagon matrix now to wrap your brain around this imagine that right beneath our feet all over the earth are these hexagonal tree stumps just we only see the ones that are exposed that have been eroded away that are on the surface and there's plenty of those but imagine that beneath us that's it's probably beneath our feet there's an, an iconic scene in one of the original star trek films and they they're walking across the hexagonal matrix on the ground as they approach some central object you many of you will remember that scene from the old star trek films so we're not making all this up okay let's go into the chat here welcome everyone hey genie hey chris ron yeah dolly was the first clone sheep Hello, hey, hey, Marcy, T. Kerr, know your realm. Okay, someone says there's a few, a full video of the speech. Okay, cool. I probably need to look at that, see what else he said. Thanks, a remnant. Yeah, um, update on Elias. Uh, he got indicted by the grand jury. Not good. The charges were not dropped. And... So that's not good news for him. Um, he's going to lawyer up and try to fight it. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want them to, you know, use, you know, use this against us. You know, it's really sad how, how law enforcement works sometimes. You know, they give you this, this feeling that everything's going to be okay when you're in the middle of getting a ticket or being arrested. Oh, don't worry about it. We'll just... You know, you can take care of it. This has happened to me several times. Fishing tickets that I got. Guys, I don't worry about it. He writes me a ticket. That was the first time I was fishing without a license. That was a long time ago. Don't worry about it. Well, I get the, the ticket in the mail. It's like $300. And then the same thing happened to me again. I was fishing out of season. I didn't even know it. I was two weeks early. And he probably thought I was out there poaching, you know. He's like, oh, you're just trying to get in before everyone else. I had no idea. I just gotten into town and I was fishing fishing the McCullumy River, pulling out these beautiful German brown trouts and I had some videos on it. Those are on the backup channel too, if you're into fishing, the one that's in the description box. And um and uh, to show that I didn't know what I was doing, I was posting it online. Obviously, if I was doing something wrong, I wouldn't be posting videos of it. They don't care about any of that. And so the guy writes me a ticket. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. Just take care of it. And he's like, I'm not going to charge you for those three fish I let go. He goes, otherwise your, your ticket would be a lot higher. So I thought everything was fine. $300 ticket. That's that's highway robbery. You can't charge someone $300 for catching a fish. I mean, unless you're some guy in a boat with a cast net and you're pulling in hundreds of fish, then write the guy a ticket. I don't know. It just we just live in backwards world it feels like the focus of law enforcement sometimes just befuddles me the things that they focus on when we when i mean the way we get policed for the stupid things there shouldn't be one crime ever committed ever again you know like a real crime like you know um uh, homicides and all that those should be like zero now. And for all the effort that they put in all the stupid stuff, redirect those efforts into the real crimes instead of policing all of us. 
So that's the story. So I just saw Elias in the uh, chat. Yeah, man, we're pray we're all praying for you. You know, uh, I just wish more people would have listened and not went into that honey trap. But it is what it is. So hopefully you can get out of it. So okay, I'm back in the chat. Yeah, they play this. It's so phony. They play this like good cop, bad cop thing. Oh, that's okay. And really what they're doing is they're de-escalating the situation. So, because they know that you would freak out if you knew how much. Because I've, I've asked cops before. I'm like, hey, how much is this ticket going to cost me? Oh, it's, it's just fine. Don't worry about it. They don't want to get into an altercation with you, but they want to make their money too. So they'll write the ticket and make it look like everything's going to be fine. And, and then when you get the bill in the mail, you freak out and there's no one to freak out on. That's why they do it. And it's really sad. It's manipulative. It's lame. It's dishonest. It's a lot of things. And they kind of did that to Elias. They told him he was going to be okay. The, ju the judge let him out of jail. And then it wasn't okay. So... Stacy says there are cubes in the sky over Nashville. Oh, wow. We don't do a lot of the UFO and that kind of stuff on this channel. I have a lot of people send me stuff. I just don't go that direction. There are a lot of good channels that kind of focus on that. And I would recommend uh, you subscribe to them to get, uh, you know, if, you're, if that's your thing. Uh, but we don't really cover a lot of that stuff. Just because half of it's fake. Or there's a, another explanation for it. And I don't feel like going through and investigating every single thing that gets sent to me to see if it's fake or real. Does that make sense? Because we're focused on other things over here. But like I said, there's a lot of good UFO channels and you can decide whether or not they're real or fake. And uh, that whole thing. Okay. Someone said they targeted people of certain colors. I'm sure that's going on. That's why I don't do anything wrong in my life. Because I don't want to be a target, you know? Try to walk the straight and narrow. I'm not aggressive towards anyone. and I don't assume things about people. I don't do drugs. I don't do any of that. Okay. You know, it's, it isn't interesting that now we're all into this phase of alien disclosure, right? And you got to be careful with that. Now, okay, so what are they going to do with that? They're not doing it because they've been compelled to release all the evidence. They're doing it because they're going to toy with us. So just know that a lot of what you're seeing, first of all, I believe there's dark spirits. And second of all, a lot of it might be them practicing Project Bluebeam. Going, okay, what can we fool them with? What's most effective? So just be careful with that, you know? Just be careful with that. If you haven't already, thumbs up this video. You know, sometimes you guys appreciate the reminder. Yeah, I didn't say weed was drugs, but... Um, I mean, aren't we to the point now where they've legalized it most places and and you can do it for personal use? They're not putting people in jail for that anymore unless you're walking around with a pound. So. Okay. Someone was just pulled over for not wearing a mask in a car? Really? In your car? That's crazy. They want the police out. Yeah, that's why they they've been hard. I, they want to. I believe. I truly believe they want to federalize the police forces, and they're going to use the people that came back from overseas to fill those roles because they're going to be desperate for jobs. And as Ellie fall, starts dropping out, right? Because they're going to be like, screw this. Then they're just going to fill the roles with all those waiting vets. At least the younger ones. 
and they're already pre-programmed to follow instructions, which they will do. They'll say I'm just doing my job. And good luck trying to sue a federalized police force. Probably won't happen. And you know, all this is fluid. We'll see how it all materializes and pans out over the next several years. But they don't just give stuff away. They never do. They always capitalize on it. And usually it's at the expense of our rights and our freedoms. So, yeah, they've been talking. Slick Dissident said something about this Robocop. Yeah, um, they've been, they got this robotic dog that they've been using as well that keeps coming up in the news. I mean, literally, it's a Robocop dog, which will be followed by a Robocop cop. Probably. They've already got the technology. All they got to do, it'd basically be like a remote control. It might not be artificial intelligence cop right away, but it'll be remote control, just like a drone would be, right? Except this thing will have like a center of gravity, it will have balance, it'll be able to run and, sh and shoot, right? And aim. And it basically, there'll be some guy sitting in a shipping container on a remote control operating these Robocops. And there'll be like an army of Robocops. You guys, we're headed toward Terminator. This is where we're all headed. The rise of the machines. We did a couple videos on the rise of the machines, the Terminator, and where all this is headed. Imagine a robo dog breaking down your door. Yeah. Yep, probably a felony to touch it. Boston Dynamic has videos up and it's scary, says Chris. Small, self-sustaining communities in the future. I agree 100%. And look, okay, think about a self-sustaining community. You guys, it's not complicated. It's not complicated, okay? Um, it, it seems so overwhelming for people. They go, man, that, that would be hard. No. Everybody's got chickens, so you got your protein. Everybody's got a garden. Some people grow tomatoes because their soil is maybe better for that. Other people grow potatoes because they're good at that. Then you just trade. You go, I'll trade some of my potatoes for your tomatoes. And now you have variety. You're going to have much of the same stuff that you had in the matrix. Maybe someone's good at knitting. So she makes shirts and pants and whatever. Yeah, you're not going to be all styling and profiling, but you're going to have some basic things. You're not going to be hurting and wanting for all this stuff. And so don't, don't ever fear that. Some people like to raise animals. Some people don't. They're going to trade their meat for your vegetables. It's not some big insurmountable life that cannot happen. And hey, if you're afraid and you're like, I don't have any skills, someone will teach you. They're going to say, hey, can you help me with this or that? And next thing you know, you're going to learn how to do it or become part of the process of doing it. And your daily effort now is immediately rewarded. It's different than working in a job where all of your efforts go into someone else who is mistreating you. Every day you give eight to ten hours of your life to someone who could give a crap less about you. And as soon as things get bad for them, they'll let you go. Which life would you rather be in? Would you, have, like, would you rather have a little bit less of luxury and be part of something bigger than yourself that you're getting immediate returns on and that you're a valuable asset because you are part of the circle of life? Or would you rather be part of a corporation and give a crap less about you who will fire you in a heartbeat, mistreat you. All they want is more, more, more. How can they fix their bottom line? Right? And more of you than you can imagine would do very well in a situation like that. You don't have to live on top of each other. You could be half a mile down the road. Still got bikes. Still got baskets on bikes. You know? And you can have your space and still trade with the people around you. 
one day I'll be entering a community similar to that on a property that I was able to save for and pick up in Arkansas. Really, really cheap. It's more affordable than you can ever imagine. It's literally two or three months of savings for what most people make. You can have acreage. And you go out there and, you know, I showed up and every single neighbor would stop, say hello. And one of them uh, hunts, invited me to go hunting. He's like, hey, let's get, let's get a deer. I said, wow, that'd be cool. I've never, never done that before. I've always wanted to get a freezer and you pop that in there. You do what you got to do to it. You got food, organic food for the whole year, probably some nice back straps off of it. What would you rather have a free deer running around? Would you rather go to the store and buy it for something that's been farmed and caged and horrified? It's pretty simple. Um, I don't know. I really haven't. I'll, I'll just say in terms. Chris asked where the Ozarks. I'm not going to say too much more about it because, uh, you know, that kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, as as the information that we begin to talk about and as the channel grows, we will become more and more of a target. So we got to be careful. Okay about um sharing these kinds of things and i think you guys could all agree i share a lot more with you than other channels do other channels you don't even know their real name you don't know where they live or anything about them you don't know if they're married or have children and i try to share with you guys what i can but i'm not gonna i won't tell you guys exactly where i'm living because that's just gonna make us a target nobody wants a channel like this to be able to show you guys what we do that would have far-reaching effects and begin to help turn the tide against all this fear and all this control. So, yeah, you know, people talk about, Will talks about a small group living in a community. Well, okay, so it sounds good, but you got personalities, right? And you got infiltrators. You have people that could be sent in. I saw a movie a while back. Gosh, I can't remember the name of it. But, um, oh, the guy from Lost was in it. Maybe it was from the series Lost. Yes, it was from the series Lost. Some of you watch Lost. And remember, they tell the story about, oh, what was his name? Not Jack, the other guy. John. John Locke. That's his name. And John is telling a story about he he joins this like commune and everybody's working together, but John doesn't realize it's a cover for a drug operation. And then some guy comes in, joins the group, and he's a cop. He's an undercover cop. And basically, um, John gets betrayed. They use John's kindness to... To, and then he accidentally sells out the group. He doesn't realize he's doing it. And they're all mad at him. They're like, John, we're not supposed to trust anybody. And the guy basically is a cop. So just to understand that this is what these people do. We saw it with uh, the Branch Davidians, right? If they can't infiltrate you, they'll find a way to knock you down. So assembling in a group like that, they're gonna, they're, you're gonna become, you're gonna be on their watch list. Because they don't want people living outside the tax base system. They don't want people living free. Because you basically, in effect, you create your own country almost. If you're growing all your own food and you're not paying into their tax system. And you're all congregated together. You basically have a small city that's outside of government. You see, and they don't want that. Because that could happen all over America. What would America look like if there were a bunch of people living outside of government? It would be fine for us, but for them, they don't like that because it's less tax dollars. It's less people they can control, control their minds, you see. So they make up lies about your group, try to infiltrate you. So I, I just don't know. I've, I know we've talked about that. And then, of course, they put that whole cult uh, label on you. Oh, that's a cult. Oh, anyone living in a city together and, you know, in a place. Oh, that's a cult. 
So you got to deal with that. The better way to do it is there's an, you know, these properties are not expensive. A few thousand bucks for acreage, you guys. And I know a lot of you don't have a few thousand dollars, but how are you living now? You're, you're, you're living somehow. You're spending money, whatever the money that you have, you're spending it somehow. You're giving it to somebody to live. So you just redirect that, save for a couple months, and now you have a property. Now that's just the beginning, obviously. These properties have to be cleared. and But guess what? You got all the time in the world. Get an axe or a chainsaw and start cutting trees down and, and all that stuff. And uh, there's enough properties where people can be around each other in close proximity without being on top of each other. And start your own thing and then start trading with other people. Next thing you know, you're going to be going less and less to the grocery store. You're going to be like, oh, I don't really need to go to the grocery store. I got everything I need. I got eggs. I got tomatoes. I got potatoes. I got broccoli. I've got my winter stuff, my winter squash and stuff that will hold me over for the winter. I can make jerky. Right? And all of a sudden, you're eating this really healthy organic food. It's delicious. You feel healthier, which then uh, drives you to have more energy to be able to run this whole thing. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. And then now all of a sudden you're in your own, you're in God's cycle of life, not the matrix anymore. You don't even need to make a lot of money to make this go around. You're not paying taxes. You're not making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and just throwing it away in mortgage and all this crazy stuff. So anyway, those are just some thoughts. We've talked a little bit about this before, but that's the story. So we'll see you guys on the other channel later today. I think in a few hours, actually. I think 10 o'clock I had a schedule, or maybe noon. And uh, I will be in the chat over there because it's a premiere, so it'll be running while we're talking. And uh, we can chat over there a lot more. Be saved if you haven't already. I love each and every one of you. Have a great day.